Yeah. All right. Well, <coughs> Rob, the way the way the two three nine kit works is that you um, you flush out the system. Now, before you uh, before we do anything at all, what you probably find if you've got a snake camera and got right down to the guts of the cooling system, have a look at the internal walls of that water jacket. There'll be places. Well, there will be, but there's layers of ferrous oxide in there. Generally. Mm hmm. And what did you see when you had them open? Was it, was it reasonably pretty yucky? Right, okay. Well, this is the first thing to do uh, because you've got a clean radiator. And what does happen is that uh, when you put the part A in, because there's a part A and a part B, part A is the business end of it, part B is the, the neutraliser cleaner. Now, <clears throat> when you put the part A in, it breaks down a top layer of ferrous oxide very quickly. The top layer, see, but, but, as I said, when you've got a snake camera and got right down to the guts of the cooling system with anything of this age that's been neglected for that long, it will have layers of ferrous oxide. Uh, you've got um, the top layer, which is the soft furry stuff, and then you've got uh, harder denser layers below that, and then you've got the cast iron. Now, uh, embedded in generally embedded in the top layer of of the ferrous oxide, that that the soft furry stuff, are pieces of shale and scale, harder denser little pieces. And when you put the part A in, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to break down that top layer very quickly and release a, a whole lot of uh, shale and scale into the system. Yeah, which gets caught up with the water pump and finds its way into the flutes of the radiator, which just exacerbates the problem times 10. You know, you don't want that to happen. We've got to protect ourselves from that. So I don't know whether you've got a uh, inline fil top, top radiator hose filter. If you haven't, uh, the best way to do it. Uh, there, there are inline top radiator hose fil uh, filters, cooling, cooling system filters. No, okay, so we, we, the best way to, to protect yourself from it whilst it's being cleaned is to, um, with a sock, you know, like a, the, the ones I use, uh, is a, I just go down to Woolies, I buy um, some business socks, and the ones I buy are um, the cotton nylon blend version of it, uh, but I get the summer versions, you know, the, like the thinner ones, and uh, yeah, the, the, the very light ones, and you, you, you can stretch them whilst you're there and feel, and see what's going to happen. So when, when, it, when you've got flow, it'll open up like a balloon in the top tank of the radiator. And if you stretch the weave, you can see that there's adequate flow that, that, that can happen. Uh, but there's, the weave isn't big enough to let anything dig through that would block a fluid of a radiator. So that's what you need. Pick out the ones you want. And then, then all you do is you disconnect the top radiator hose from the radiator. You, grow, you grab the, the, the uh, toe of the sock and then you push that into the top tank of the radiator through the male fitting on the tank, push it almost all the way in. Uh, and then when you get to the end of the sock or the, or the neck of the sock, peel that back over the male fitting uh, on, on the tank and then push the hose back over the top of all that and lock it down with a hose ring. Now, when, when you've got that flow, it'll just open up inside the tank. It won't go anywhere, it won't burst because it's got the walls of the, t of the top tank to, to, to expand to, and, and that, that uh, stops any of the crap finding its way into the flutes of the radiator and just uh, stuffing up the system even more. Now, um, next thing is that you uh, work out what your literage is in your cooling system. So 186 is around about 10 litres. Yeah, I think it's about 10 litres. So uh, what you do is you put, um, you, you grab a bucket, like Mum's plastic bucket out of the laundry, uh, put the, um, put, oh, there's a spoon in the kit. Uh, so w w what, what we need first is the part A, the business end. Open up the part A, there's the spoon there. Uh, put 10 heap spoonfuls of part A into the bottom of the, bottom of the bucket. Now you can be very generous with it. You don't need to level them off. Um, so just heat them in and then you know, we need hot water. You can boil the jug or hot water out of the taps fine uh, but it's, it's, it's got to be hot to dissolve it. You'll be there for a month of Sundays trying to dissolve it with cold water. Now all we need is about two or three litres of hot water in there. Give it a swish around until it's fully dissolved. Pour that into the empty cooling system. Top that up with a hose. Uh, then um, uh, put the cap on. Uh, now I'll go back one step. Now. The, the, this being a 186 and, and being a, probably a club car and it's on club plates so you're not going to be driving it a lot uh, even though you can 
but it's probably a better idea not to drive it and that means we've got to idle it to make this stuff work. This stuff, you know, the part A is about 10 times more aggressive at 70C than above than it is at room temperature. You know, uh, so it's, um, so the more flow you've got, the more turbulence you create, and the more heat you put into it, the faster it's going to happen for you. So what, what, I, su right, well, what, what I suggest is that we take the thermostat out, so it's got immediate flow, and, and we, we use the full force of the, uh, the water pump to move the solution around. So you've got a heat more flow, uh, with the thermostat out at idle. Now, once that's out and you've got the product in, uh, all you do now is over, a, say, a two-day period. That's what we're going to work on. Um, forget about the instructions that are on the container because what we've found, particularly with this product, is that one set of generic instructions is never going to work properly for every application. You know, you've got vehicles that have been like, yep, yeah, all right. So, so now uh, what we've got to do is uh, idle it up to temperature don't let it you know you're not trying to kill it just bring it up to temperature and shut it off and then when it cools do it again do it again do it again do it as many times as you can over say a two-day period now this thing is bristling with erosion and corrosion in there and and most of what you've done so far has fixed a lot of it there's areas where the, uh, you, you'll, you'll generate a lot of uh, rust coming out of it but we don't want to make the situation any worse this product as i said was is pretty much inert to copper brass solder cast iron and cast aluminium but it is a cleaner and as such it's mildly corrosive so we we, we don't want to leave it in there for an extended period of time uh, to corrode and we know that say a two-day period uh, nothing happens even with badly corroded vehicles so um, if we if we stick to about two days and and work it as hard as we can over that period of time that's generally enough to clean it out but we Without X-ray vision, you don't know what you, you you know how far you are along with a clean or you know how bad it was in the first place. So, what we normally suggest is you go on colour changes in the liquid, and that'll give you a better idea of where you are in relationship to the clean. So, when you put the product in out of the bucket when you mixed it up, it's clear. It's pretty much it maybe maybe a little hazy, but it's clear. It looks like clean clear water. You pour that in. Uh, and then once you've topped it up and run it for a bit, you'll find it'll have a big reaction with that top layer of ferrous oxide because it's the soft furry stuff. That's it, it goes dark brown, it looks really murky. Uh, but when it gets past that top layer and you're down to the harder, denser layers below it, it turns from that brown murky look almost into a light beer. And then the closer you get back onto the cast iron, and the less you've got to react with within your cooling system, the clearer it becomes. All right? So that, that's what we're looking for, is we're going from clear to clear. That's what you monitor. And, and if by the second day you find that it's still you know, a pissy yellow or, a, or like, a, like a white beer, then you might have to have it one extra day at a time you know, to, to, uh, to get it right back to the to square one again but you can get it pretty much looking like it did when it rolled off the production line if you just follow those, those color, color changes in the liquid now well uh, I would well that's that's right now what I would do as, as a precaution I would after the first day I'd change the sock even if the sock is uh, it's only got like a, a, a you know a small amount of, of, of uh, solids in there um, it's just better to be sure because I've, I have pulled socks out or tried to pull socks out after the first day or after a week actually, when I say a week, a, a, a couple of days and, and I've tried to pull the sock out, couldn't get it out and there was that much crap in there. There was about two kilos of, of rust coming through <laughs> because they, some of these vehicles, some of the bigger vehicles, they've got a huge surface area um, and there's a lot of rust you know, that's been generated over the years. So, um, but after the first day, if you, if you took it out and you saw that there was a lot of rust in there, then you'd probably just do that every second day, every, every day that you use it, just at the end of the day, pull it out, uh, just to be sure. And also, you know, these, these, it's a cleaner and it does probably have uh, an adverse effect on the cotton. Uh, so, you know, I'd, I'd be, you know, I wouldn't leave it in there for more than a couple of days anyway and then burst and, and just you know it's, it may as well back to square one again type of thing so now what the part a does is that it, 
it, it um, breaks the ferrous oxide down, dissolves the calcium. Now what it breaks the ferrous oxide down into is what they call iron salts. What iron salt looks like is like talcum powder. Zillions of these little particles of talcum powder. Uh, they've gone through this chemical reaction to get to where they are and they've taken on what they call uh, a molecular attraction of metal. In other words, they become a little bit magnetic and they, they want to stick to every little nook and cranny within the cooling system. Uh, terribly difficult to wash them out with the garden hose because the power of that hose sort of doesn't get to the never regions of the back of the motor or up in the head or the gunnels or you know so so um, you just when you when you flush out the part A it comes out clear and not a lot of debris want to come out with it so it's a bit disconcerting if you haven't seen the, the colour changes and, and, and used the product previously but, but the idea is don't be too zealous about trying to flush it out because they won't want to come away easily that's why there's a part B right now so part B uh, you've, you've flushed out the part A and now you're ready for the part B and you make up the part B in exactly the same way as you did the A with the same Yeah, that's all you do. Just just flush it out with a hose. Uh, don't need to, to put water back into it and flush it, you know, with a with a water pump or anything like that at this stage, because it just won't come away. What's come away so far is all you'll get out of it, uh, and that's why you don't have to be too jealous about doing that. So when when you put the part B in, um, <clears throat> you do that with the hot water again, uh, mix it up with the same number of spoonfuls, pour that in, top it up with a hose. Now B is an overnight thing. So what, what you do with a bee is you, you, you run it up to temperature, just get it hot a couple of times, let it sit overnight, bring it up to temperature in the morning, drop it out. Now, what, what the part B does is it neutralizes the cleaning action of the part A, uh, brings your pH back to neutral, not far off neutral anyway, uh, gets rid of the debris you generated using the part A. Uh, now, the debris being those iron salts, so what, the, what it does now is the part B reacts with those iron salts and by the way those iron salts look like surface rust. They, they are they're zillions of these little particles, they're bright orangey red in colour, they're sticking to everything and they just look like surface rust. Now what the part B does, it chemically, chemically reacts with those iron salts yet again. They go from an orangey red colour, rusty colour, to a, almost a black colour and they lose that molecular attraction of metal, now become more free floating within the cooling system, a lot easier to get it out at this point. And then, um, well I would, I would do it with a billion there, even though you probably don't need it, but then I've seen little bits and pieces that have sort of hung on, hung on, hung on and then let go and with a sock not being in place. And so it's good to have it there just as a precaution. Um, now, uh, once, once you've flushed out, well, when you flush out the part B, generally the part B comes out black and all, and all the debris comes out with it at that point. Uh, you'll still have a little bit of debris left in there, which we've got to get rid of. Now, what you do at that point is you flush it every which way you can, uh, but the, 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 the way to get the last little bits out is that you fill the cooling system up with, with water, uh, leave the cap off this time and just run it. Now you've got the thermostat out, so the water pump's gonna act like a fire hose now, and it's gonna move that solution and get all those particles up in suspension, and then you quickly turn it off and drop that bottom radiator hose and, and empty it, and then you, before it gets too hot, because you wanna do it again straight after. You don't wanna wait, keep waiting for the block to cool down before you put cold water back into it. So you know, all you do is just get it up in suspension, drop it out. Now, now one of the things that we've done in the past, just to sort of prove what is coming out, is, is that you, um, uh, you, when you drop out that, drop the bottom radiator hose, I, I, I just grab a, uh, well, I, I, you, can, you can do it with anything, like a saucepan or a bucket, but you angle the bucket, let's say you've got a bucket, uh, you, you angle the bucket under the vehicle. Now, as the water comes out, it's, it's, um, it's gonna overflow the bucket, but the, the, the metal particles or these iron salts that are coming out with it, they're quite heavy and they'll, they'll sit in the bottom of the bucket and when you, when you empty it, you have a look at it, uh, empty the, the cooling system, have a look inside the bucket, you can see how much came out that time. The next time you do it, it's probably going to be half of that. The next time you do it, it's like you end up, after you've done it two or three times, there's, there's basically nothing coming out but you know a few dregs and you can keep going with that until it's completely empty of just clinkly water coming out. 
Um, now, the reason that's important is that when you put coolant back into uh, a cooling system that still has some of those iron salts in there, you put a bright green coolant into it and it goes brown overnight, you know, after use, because it discolors it. So we, we, we've got to get the last of those little dregs out. Mm, that's, and that's about it. That's, that, that should bring it back to the square one again. Uh, uh, well, yeah, but you can you can clean the heater matrix out at the same time if you have it. Yeah, yeah. So when when you're cleaning the the heater, um, all you do with that is, is have the heater on, of course. And uh, when you when you're idling it, you can sit in there and, and say, okay, well, well, the heater's not much on very much at the moment. But it's amazing when you do clean it out. Hey, I've got a heater again. You know, it's <laughs> you can feel it. It's like, oh well, wow. can't wait for winter type of stuff. <laughs> oh, crikey, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's right. Well, that's the whole idea. Yep. Well, uh, I can, I can. The best one I can recommend is our 500 coolant. Um, now, th th this, is, this is an interesting product. See, this, th this product was built in an era where nobody was thinking about what traffic was going to be like in 2020. <laughs> so we've, we've got to compensate for the inefficiencies that, that these older cooling systems do have. Right? So, so what we've done with this product, it's, it's, what it is is a, um, it's, it's a, it's a hybrid version of a, a traditional coolant married to a waterless coolant. Now, the, what we're taking from waterless coolants is a, a range of chemicals uh, collectively and generically called um, thermal conductivity coefficient additives. Now, what they do is that they, they change the surface tension of the fluid within the cooling system and re reduce the frequency and size of vapour that gets formed on the internal walls of the water jacket, which allows that liquid to wet that surface out more completely than a conventional coolant could ever do and pull the heat out a lot more efficiently than a conventional coolant could ever do. Now, what we did was we took that technology from a waterless coolant, added it into this product called 500. Now, 500 is a 15 litre container of ready to use coolant. That means you've got, you know, you've got 10 litres going into the system, you've got 5 litres for top ups if you need it for the future. Right, that'll last you a lifetime. Now, um, the, what's in this product is, is a 50% solution of monoethylene glycol. The water content is demineralized. Uh, the, the inhibitor package in there is called G12++, which is the, the one that BMW, Mercedes, Audi, VW are using today. General Motors and, and Ford are using it now too. It, they're like, this is the top of the tree, seven years, 350,000 K protection, uh, but it's bulletproof stuff. So that, you know, when you've got an investment vehicle, uh, this, this is it, you know, for, for cars that sit around for an extended period of time and stuff like that, you won't get corrosion from this. But what makes it special is that it's got in there the, these, these additives, these thermal conductivity coefficient additives. Now, what they're doing in this formula um, is they're working pretty much the way monoethylene glyc glycol works as, a, as a, a, an anti-boil, but far more efficiently. Uh, now, that means that um, when you put the two together, it, it, what you've done is you've, you've, you've actually brought your boil point of, of the coolant up to about 140C and your vapor only point up to about 124C, uh, which would, in, that, that would increase your thermal capacity no matter what you could put in there by about 30 or 40%. And that buys you a tremendous amount of brownie points in traffic in older inefficient cooling systems. So it's, it's, uh, it definitely runs the vehicle cooler. You never have any overheating issues in it and it, and it will definitely uh, protect the vehicle from corrosion for the future. R great, okay. Yeah. Yep.
No, uh, we've, we've, got, we've got two sizes, one for semi-trailers and earth moving equipment, which is not shown there. Not, right. <laughs> well, the one you, one you got there uh, 